welcome to another episode of After the Whistle. As you can see, it's just a, it's just a man here today. Uh, Alana, she's not feeling well. She was gonna be here, but she's not feeling well. So we'll see her again another time, but not this week. And so it's just me and Todd here, and we got a lot to talk about. He got basketball practice soon, and they got season opener tomorrow. It's August. Yep, it's August. I think 7 p.m. 7 p.m. in August. Yep, in support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to go back to it. So y'all see more. We got, we got a. Y'all see, y'all hear more from the Lady Bulldogs in a bit. But um, let's get right into this uh, this past game between the Patriots and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things happened in this game. A lot of things happened in this game. Um, bad officiating. We've had offensive woes. People can't get open. People can't block. Defense had a little sequence where they just gave up 23 straight points. And with all that resulted in a 23-16 to loss, then the Patriots had a chance to send the game into overtime. And the Chiefs played about as well as they could play in probably the – from like the – they like second or – the probably like third or fourth possession until like the third, the third quarter. And then the Patriots figured them out. And they, could, they didn't score again. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I stopped watching this game in the third quarter. I had to go do something. But I was saying, like, it just didn't seem like we were going to win this game at all because we don't do too well with dual quarterbacks. And our three losses have been against guys that can run the ball and throw. So we got to figure out a way to stop that. Yeah, and they need to figure out a way to get this running game going because mm-hmm. you, we can't. It's evident that the receivers are having a hard time separating and getting open, and the running game, we're just not getting much from them. I mean, I'm looking at these carries right now. Six for James White. Sony Michelle had five for eight yards. Rex Burke had a seven for 15 yards. Brady had two for 20 yards. That's just not good. That's not good at all, especially in December, because it's like, wow. Yeah, and I asked you before the show started, I felt like some of these guys might be trying to push Brady into retirement because he's using too much arm strength and they're not utilizing the run. You only run the ball 22 times the whole entire game, and Brady's throwing the ball usually over 40 times, but this game's only 36, which isn't that bad, but Mm -hmm. the guy's 42 years old, like. Give his bones and tendons a rest. <laughs> right. And if, if you look at the Patriots' defense, they, you know, boom, interception right off the bat. Field goal for the Patriots ends up getting blocked. And then, you know, the second quarter, the Chiefs scored 17 points, and then they score, only scored three points in the second half. They had 21st half points and then three points in the second half. So they did a pretty good job on all the Chiefs' big big weapons. I mean, Kelsey had seven catches for 66 yards. Tyreek Hill had six for 62 yards, but there was not no big plays that Tyreek Hill usually does, and they kept him contained. Again, they seem to be able to do that well. But we got to talk about this officiating because, oh my goodness, now, you know, I'm, I'm not one to complain about officials, okay, probably sometimes, but depending on what it is. If it, you know, certain calls, you're like, okay, you'll get mad, and then you'll be like, that, that happens every game. But for them to miss a, t- to miss a touchdown, that that's now that's just you know come on what are we doing here those those are the type of stuff that you have to get correct because you have a responsibility to know what's happening and you would know he'd step out of bounds if there was a big dent on those on on the out of bounds line you know the more help these refs are given the less focus they put into each call and it shows firsthand. Yeah, because I'm just, I'm just sitting here like one ref's like he don't know, the other ref's like then they come up with him not being out of bounds. My thing is, okay, the Patriots did have no more, they couldn't challenge it because they ran out of challenge. But my thing is, it seemed like the refs weren't sure. If you're not sure, just call it a touchdown because you're going to have to review it anyways. So what is so hard about that? Because Everybody saw that he was. It was a touchdown. But if you're not sure, call it a touchdown. Every touchdown play gets reviewed. Go to the review booth. If it's not a touchdown, run the play over. But if you this is where logic comes into play, and society doesn't have much logic when it comes to making decisions. Apparently. Mm-hmm. And also, there was a few other plays. There was a pass interference. I, I don't get bad about pass interference because they miss those all the time. But it was that one was. <laughs> He tackled him. Bear hugged him. He, he bear hugged him and they didn't call that. And I'm just like, Ugh. and then the Patriots did get a touchdown. They call a touchdown. They're going off the field and they they said it wasn't a touchdown, which it wasn't. But you called it a touchdown. Go review it. Why didn't you like? 
and it just messed up the whole a whole lot of stuff. But it's like officiating has been horrible throughout the season, and it's I don't even know how they can fix it because we we're seeing it every week. It's gonna be tough to fix it because the standards of society on they aren't as high as they used to be. Yeah. People are allowed to make a million mistakes compared to being able to make one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's only going to get worse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, the Pat, the Pats haters are like, the, finally the pit, the cars don't go the Patriots way. I'm, I'm like, if you could tell me something else besides the tuck rule that the, the that didn't go in the Patriots' favor, please do. And every example I, they'll, they'll give me, I'm like, okay, that's part of the rules. That's <laughs> like the offsides on Kansas City. I'm like, he was lined up offsides. I mean, what are, you, what, what are we doing here? Most, most of the stuff that goes their way is because the other team committed a penalty or did something dumb. So it's like, and what? they know the rules. Yeah, right? So I, it makes no sense. But hey, it's a tough break for them. This was their first home loss in them. Uh, like 22 games or 21 games, so in the 20s. Yeah, so right now they need to win out. I still think they'll finish 13 and three. Um, their right, Ravens right now still got the number one overall seed if they win out. So if yet yeah, with all this said, Patriots win out, they'll still get a first round bye in a home playoff game. So not all not all is lost, but they need to figure something out with the offense. It's make a fall, make a phone call. Man, <laughs> yeah, call me, son. I don't know. Um, all right, the Rams, they got a, they got a little, they got a little thing going on here now. That's two back-to-back games. They put together two good out- offensive outings, and what do you know? Todd Gurley is touching the football. Hey, give it to a guy named Todd. <laughs> Some Todd is always gonna happen yeah. for you, but he's he's looking like the Todd Gurley we knew from a season or two ago. Granted, he should have got more than 23 carries, but. He's scoring. He's how he's he's relieve he's relieving Goff from throwing too many passes because yeah. Goff only threw 31, which is a decent number for him. He got two interceptions too. Uh, yeah, I don't understand that, but me yeah. me either. But <laughs> but yeah, that, that's um yeah they talk, we we were saying that Todd Gurley is the engine that makes that offense go, and their defense actually finally stepped up and played well. They didn't allow Russell Wilson to kill them or throw any touchdowns. They picked them off and sacked them five times. He had a 36.9 QBR, and they held, they contained their running game. Chris Carson had 15 for 76 yards, but they contained their running game. And for Seattle, that's the key. Their running game is the key to their offense. Yeah, and I don't think they ran enough to help Wilson out because they only ran the ball 21 <laughs> times, and you're averaging five yards a carry. You yeah. have to run the ball at least. 30, 35, just to relieve Wilson because he's been saving you guys all season. When you and also it doesn't help to get down 21 to three. Eh? It's that's when you start forcing. That's when you start you know passing the ball more. And it's it, it was one of those games the the Rams need because they they basically have to win out if they want a chance. They right now they're the outside looking in in the playoff race. But yeah, they definitely needed to they need to start playing a whole lot better. They got the Cowboys coming up and. If they went out and maybe one of the, those two teams in the wild card, right now the wild card is Minnesota and Seattle. If one of them may fall off, it you know, they, they could fall in their favor, but they, they need a win because they got, the, to close their season, they're on the road against Dallas and then they're on the road against San Francisco. It's going to be tough. And then they got a home game against Arizona to close it out. So they need a, they, they need a win off the Yeah, I can see them going 2-1. Because the Cowboys can't beat anybody decent. No, they yeah. So if you got a good record, they just can't beat you. They probably, <laughs> they probably won't even show up. <laughs> so, <laughs> we we we've seen we've seen the Cowboys and what they are. So they they have a good chance. They, Grant, they've gone into Dallas before and won there. So that that's working in their favor. But yeah, they need to they need to play solid football these, these next couple games. And I think Todd Gurley, I think he said some type of right. He's got like fifty touchdown, fifty career touchdowns now, and uh, however many games he's played. It's okay. like he's on pace. He's on pace to uh, I think to break Ladainian Tomlinson's record of touchdowns for a career. Because I mean, he's only twenty five and he already got fifty touchdowns. So. Yeah, yeah, he's doing well. Yeah. He's doing well. Yeah, but now, just give him the ball more. Yeah. All right, speaking of the Dallas Cowboys, they Thursday night football, they didn't show up in Chicago. They made Mitchell Trubisky look like an MVP candidate, and he was – he he was doing whatever he wanted against them, and there was much, there wasn't much resistance from the Dallas defense, and it showed it reared its ugly end because the Bears just 
they had a field day offensively on them. Dallas didn't. That Dallas couldn't do anything. I mean, Trubisky went 23 for 31, 244, three touchdowns and one into. When's the last time he's thrown three touchdowns oh. in the game? Has he thrown three touchdowns in the game? Well, I don't know. <laughs> bounce back game for him. But he's been playing well the past couple of weeks, hasn't he? Though. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. That's that's actually back to back games where he's played well and he used his legs too, uh, like up to 10 carries and 63 yards. That's, I think. What somebody said is Trubisky, when he doesn't have to think that much, he plays really well, and that's what that's what the Bears' offense did. They got him moving, they got him, you know, on the rollouts, and that was what I don't understand is they they marched right down the field, their first position of the game, and then that was it. Nothing until the fourth quarter. They couldn't do nothing. They abandoned the run. They had Dak Prescott throwing 49 times. Crazy. Am Amari Cooper, I don't. I don't even know that guy. He's just, I don't know about him. He's, it seems like he wants to play certain games that he doesn't want to play. You see, he mentally checks. It seems like he mentally checks out of games. I mean, he's a wide receiver, and they're known as the Divas of the team, so I could see him getting a little aggravated and just quitting on the team. But what about Zeke, though? If, yeah. you, if, he has, if your man has two touchdowns, 81 yards on, on 19 carries, he deserves at least 10 more. Yeah. Yeah, remember what I said earlier? Remember what I said in a previous show how nothing good happened? They haven't won a game when Dak Prescott has thrown over like 36 times. It's damn near through 50 times this game. Like, what's the offensive coordinator doing? They're, they're not mixing nothing up. No, not at all. They, uh, I don't get it. Yeah, they, this is. Dallas is probably. I mean, I, I didn't think they were going to be. I said I wasn't. I didn't think they were going to be this good. All the hype that came into the season that they had, they had so much hype in the season. They were going to be Super Bowl contenders, and they just not living up to the hype. And it's like you got to look at everywhere, everybody, everybody. Got to look. You got to look at the head coach. You got to look at you know, you know, the mask, Jerry Jones. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, you just got to look at everybody because they just collectively as a team, all this talent, it just, it's not working. And some and certain guys got big contracts too. My thing is sometimes it's not the players, man. You might need to look at the coaches, look at the GM, look at the owner, because they haven't been. They really haven't been good, good since the '90s. Yeah, they made they had a cup. They had a playoff. They made the playoffs with Rome what one, one or two times. Yeah, they, ain't even they lost really. in the first round. Yeah. So it's like the culture hasn't changed since the '90s. So it's time to shake some things up up there. Yeah, and they got yeah. So hope they got another tough one coming in the, into Texas Stadium or Cowboy Stadium, whatever you call that damn place. I don't know. I don't I know what to call it. Um, yeah, they got the Rams coming in. So whatever. I'm just the NFC East is an abomination. I, that whole conference is terrible. Uh, let's let's talk about another conference, another team that's doing great. The the Lamar Jackson show continued. They went up to Buffalo, and it was a tough game against a tough defense. And Lamar Jackson still managed to throw three touchdowns, one interception, and lead his team to a victory and clinch a playoff berth. Yeah, man, that boy balling. 16 for 25, 145. Granted, it's not gaudy numbers, but he's efficient. Sometimes less is more. And when you got a balanced offense, you can do some. You can do. You can play like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. De definitely. And you know, I guess the team too. Look, the Bills. The Bills defense has been pretty. They've been pretty stout all season. They they contained them for the most part. But yeah, he was he was finding opening. He was finding guys running down the field to get open. And nobody talks about his throwing ability because he's been. You know, what would I look? He, there's only two games here. That I, that I see where he's uh, he was he had under sixty percent. He's got a fifty one percent completion game and he got a forty five percent completion game. And those were those were his bag his worst games. And I believe they and they only lost one of those games. But on the other end, he's over a thousand yards rushing, one thousand seventeen yards rushing on the ground, and he's a couple yards he's a few yards away from passing Michael Vick for most all time. Mm -hmm. So it's like. You know, what are you gonna do with this guy? <laughs> yeah, man, and the Ravens defense did they think too. Yeah. Containing Mr. Allen. Yeah, six X. Yeah. On Allen. So, you know, he likes to get out there and maneuver and he wasn't able to. So definitely balanced with the offense and defense for the Ravens. You know, I've I I was not I've never been a believer in the Bills. I'm like, yeah, they're having a good <laughs> season, but I mean the when they play contenders it's like yeah, come back to reality. You can beat up on those teams that aren't good, but come back to reality now. So, I mean, good, good. Kudos, <laughs> kudos to the Ravens. Uh, they get, they got a Thursday night, Thursday night matchup. They play Thursday night football. I get somebody on. 
Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, Monday Night Football. The man, Eli Manning came out and he was throwing that thing in the first half. He was, he was showing vintage Eli Manning. The Eagles were showing how horrible their defense is. They couldn't get a stop, couldn't get off the field on third downs. They just, it's just been a horrible season for the Eagles, but they somehow managed to win this game. Yeah. <laughs> This game was wild. There was one, I think, towards the end of the game when, um, when Eli got sacked, but he didn't really get sacked. The dude touched him, <laughs> and he just fell to the floor like yeah. five steps later. Like, bro, what did you do it, man? Like, <laughs> that's typical Eli. Like, he just fell to the floor. Like, yeah. nobody even tackled you. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's typical Eli. But, yo. I don't know what's going on with the Eagles wide receivers, but I don't ever want to be in their wide receiver room. I think they dressed only three receivers, and then Alshon got hurt at some point in the game. That dude was always hurt. So they had a whole bunch of second and third string guys in there. And Zach Ertz was the guy that that they looked to. Zach Ertz and this guy named Scott. What's, uh, what's his name? Boston Scott. He came in and he had himself a game catching and running. He had 59 yards on the ground, 69 yards receiving, and he actually was—he was the key. He—he uh, he was the key for them because Carson Wentz kept finding him, and each time they handed him the ball, he got positive yards. So, hey. Yeah, I don't really know what to take out of this game, man. <laughs> this. <laughs> Just that the NFC East is an abomination. Yeah, that's all I took out of that, though. But kudos to Carson Wentz, you know, leading his team to the, yeah. the victory in OT, though. Nice touchdown pass. Yeah, he, need, he needed, they needed this. They, they definitely needed this. And maybe they could get some momentum going. And, you know, this, this might be the type of game that, you know, I don't know. But if you look at their schedule, they got, they got another one against the Giants. And they got the Cowboys week 16. And I believe they got Washington. So... Man, they still go wide receivers that love dropping passes yeah. in, the, in the end zone. Yeah, they do. That's a bit. They, like. need, they need some stick em or something. They need to stick them. They need something. Like my goodness, get it together. Yeah. Uh, uh, the game of the year. Another one involving the Saints. They had the game of the year. Not the Saints. The the Forty Niners. They had the game of the year against. Uh, Ravens a week ago, and then they come back, and this was probably one of the craziest games I've, I've ever seen between them and the Saints. And my man George Kittle, he just basically was a man possessed on that, on that go-ahead catch that led to the game-winning field goal. It was like that dude did not want no parts of George Kittle. He did not want to tackle him at all. Have you seen what George Kittle has been doing to people? All season, yeah. stiff arming, running people over, like playing injured, destroying. I, yeah, he, yeah, this is the play right here. He's an animal. Yeah, the, the, yeah. My man wanted to make a business decision because he 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 wanted no parts. Yeah, like and Kittle's not. He don't do regular stiff arms. Yeah. <laughs> He, he's trying to make sure when you hit the when you, you hit the fail, your soul pops out of you too. Yeah. Like he, oh. Yeah, if you look at the quarterback numbers. I mean, Jimmy G. This was a this was I think his fifth or sixth game winning touchdown drive that he he's produced. But Drew Brees over there throwing five touchdowns, and then Jimmy Garoppolo throwing four touchdowns. A lot of people been been doubting Jimmy G. But he's been he's been putting in the work. And you look at Emmanuel Sanders, he might be the best pickup of the free agency or the trade deadline. He's seven catches, 157 yards, threw a touchdown, and caught one. So Emmanuel Sanders had made a, a big difference for those receivers because him, Debo Samuels, and Kittle, those are three guys that you need, you, need a, you can't leave one-on-one. -on -one. And then Marcus Goodwin, I think he got hurt, but when he comes in too, that's another receiver who can produce. So and you can see that. Jimmy G's more comfortable in those situations. Mm -hmm. Compared to when everybody's clowning him about looking nervous, a couple was it what week like four, couple five weeks ago? Yeah, yeah so yeah. so now that he's more comfortable in those situations, he's gonna flourish, and he definitely flourished this weekend. Yeah, and Michael Thomas, he's now had he now has 121 receptions on the season. I think he's gonna break Mike. Uh, he's gonna break Marvin Harrison's record. I think my Marvin Harrison's record is like 143. Receptions. The top. Yeah, I think it's 143. There's three games left, and he's on pace to get like 150 receptions. I hope he does, man. I hope he is. Yeah, and this is the offense to do it in because Drew Brees is gone. He's like the main target for that offense. But this was a big one for San Francisco because now they got first place overall in the NFC, first place in their division, and they're eyeing for that first round bye, which is right now Seahawks. 
and Saints are and the Packers are fighting for that number two seed. So this was good. This was a key one for San Francisco. And man, I told we've said it. This team they got the they got the recipe to win anywhere. Yeah, they do. So uh, I don't know who they got coming up. Let's see who they got coming up. They have oh they got the Falcons. Ooh. They got the Falcons, Rams, and then they close out at Seattle. So I can see them. I can see them going 14 and 2, 13 and 3. I can see that happening. So we'll see what happens with them. All right, the Minnesota Vikings, my man Kirk Cousins and them boys, they put a pounding on the on the Lions and hey man, Kirk Cousins gotta be considered for an MVP in the MVP race. We gotta talk about him in the MVP race as much criticism that I've given him throughout <laughs> the years. You can't criticize his play this season, especially when he lost his best, his second best wide receiver in Adam Thielen. And Stephon Diggs really has stepped up. And D Dalvin Cook, too, those guys. But Kirk Cousins, he's, he hasn't been making mistakes, and, you know, they're, they're still in it. So he only had six incompletions going 24 for 30, 242, one touchdown. But let's shout out the Vikings defense yeah. for making it easy on them, for getting them two intos and five sacks. Yeah, um, I forget his name. Hunter, 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 Hunter. His name's Hunter. He's got like 50 career sacks in his first four or five years in the league. He's that's like on pace for some crazy. Yeah, sounds like Yeah, 50 in just a short amount of time. That's <laughs> And this is a guy not a lot of people probably knows about just because he's in Minnesota. But, man, that, that was a good one for him. Nah, and his name's Hunter? Yeah, his name's Hunter. So I guess the name fits. That <laughs> what he be doing to the quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but the Vikings, they still have a chance at their division, too, because the, the Packers are only one game ahead of the. Yeah, the Packers only got a game lead ahead of them. The Packers are 10 3, and the Vikings, they do have a matchup with the Packers coming up. So um, they. They could, they could possibly get themselves a home game if they if they are able to win out and beat the Packers and break that have that tiebreaker. Yeah, that's all it is. You just got to beat the Pack. Beat them cheeseheads, man. Yeah. I'm the rooting guy, for y'all. The guy's name's Daniel Hunter. Daniel Hunter? Yo, who's the quarterback? The dude's from LSU. Okay. Who's the quarterback for the Lions? Some guy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> How you say his last name? A blow. All right. I wasn't sure. All right. That's fine. I just wasn't sure. <laughs> Yeah, blow. He really blowed because <laughs> that guy was terrible. <laughs> he was horrible, man. The Lions, man. It sucks to be a Detroit Lions fan, man. They, them guys haven't been good for forever. And the yeah. the only coach they had that actually gave him three winning seasons the four years he was there, they decided to fire him. So it's <laughs> they're gonna be looking for another head coach after this year. Matt Patricia. You should have known better than taking that job because, you know, you were destined to fail. Yeah. <laughs> Just because of that job. All right. The Cheeseheads. The Cheeseheads, the Green Bay Packers, they – this game was a little closer than it looked. This was this game was close. The Packers had a pretty good lead. Then they let them come back in the game. And Darius Geis from the, Reds, from the Redskins, he can't catch a break. He, so he was injured last year, this guy. Talented running back. And he was having himself a game this year, and now and they placed him on IR because uh, he – he hurt himself this game, but the, and the pack, well, the pack they just needed. They did what they needed to do. They they beat the team that they're supposed to do. They remain at the top of the division, and their running game is going to be the key for them if they want to make a deep playoff run. Yeah, man, because Jones, he's a dual threat, running and catching. Yeah. combined 192 and one touchdown. Like he's always kind of like he's he's able to bail Aaron Rodgers out in certain mm -hmm. situations so you're going to need him definitely and usually Aaron Rodgers has to bail himself out with his legs all the time when mm -hmm. the pocket collapses but now they got this guy and I think Devontae Adams is getting healthy again so the Packers that was a good good win I'll say this about Washington. They're actually looking like they want to be competitive these last couple games. The last three games, they've been competitive. I give credit to Dwayne, Dwayne Haskins because that guy, he actually, he, he actually shows that he cares and wants to win. Well, a, lot of, a lot of players, they just, you know, at some point they give up on the season depending on their records. But this guy, he's actually, you know, he's actually showing that he actually wants to change the culture of Washington because – he plays hard and he he tries to make the plays for the first team to win. That's why they drafted them there. That's yeah. why you draft quarterbacks so they can change the culture of the team and turn your 
club into a winning organization. Yeah, but this one is it's gonna be tough because that organization is almost similar to the Cowboys. It's just like everything is just toxic from the I mean they only want to top to the bottom. Yeah. And that is and that's insulting to a large group of people. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, huh? <laughs> Better luck next year. Yeah. Uh all right. Houston Texans, they beat the Pats. Everybody was like, oh, okay, this is the Houston Texans team we're going to see throughout the season. They're so good. And then they they were down 38-3 to at one point to Denver. And first-year quarterback Drew Locke, who came in there and put on a show. He was slinging that thing and pause. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was throwing that thing, and he was just – he was carving up that defense. He was carving out that defense. And this is – this is the type of game that this is the this is why I say Bill O'Brien is not going to get this team a Super Bowl because how are you guys not prepared? I feel you, but Lock was he was balling Damn. in the past, and they was averaging ten, they averaging almost eleven yards per pass. Man, like that's tough to to deal with that for a full game. And he yeah. killed them all in the first half. Yeah, yeah, he the was. Game was over for really, <laughs> for halftime even hit. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely, he was definitely uh, destroying. I think this was his first game as a starter. I think this was his first game starting, and he put up these type of numbers. So first impressions. Yeah, but you know, you know what I always say: wait until t teams get enough film on him to oh, see yeah. how good he can be. But hey, looking good so far because him and that guy Cortland Sutton. He got, he got some weapons. Denver got some weapons. No, he definitely do. But with the Texans, though, like, you go six for 13 on third downs, you don't deserve to win at all. You can't even continue the drive. You can't. You just came out not ready to play. Yeah, that is like, embarrassing. Then Watson throwing the ball 50 times. What are they doing? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't understand that. Especially they know he takes a lot of sacks because he holds on to the ball a little too long and tries to extend plays or tries to create plays and – it's like you got to protect your quarterback. You got to protect him from himself because, hell, he's reckless sometimes. Like, you see the right touchdown there. he had? Yes, yeah. and he jumped in the air. Yeah. Granted, I was impressed, but as a quarterback, he had to realize that he can't do that. No, he, he, yeah, and he's not He's not like six. He's not like 250 or anything like that. Come on now, you can't. <laughs> your body can't take You can only do that all for all so much. Mm -hmm. and, and also turnovers. Three turnovers ain't going to help you. They had three turnovers to the to the Broncos one, and they yeah, it was just bad. Yeah, it, it was bad. So uh, <laughs> that's what that's what they get for uh, getting on their high horse after that Pats game. All right, Pittsburgh they're still in the wild. they Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin. I think we're talking about this. He's gonna get coach of the year because the way Pittsburgh has been playing. They got this wild card. It looks like they got the wild card spot locked down. They're fighting with ten Tennessee's. On that wild card, too, is Tennessee's creeping up on that wild card. Uh, we ain't talking about Tennessee because it's Tennessee, but <laughs> oh, but Pittsburgh, they do they doing it they're doing all this with backups. Yeah, like yeah, you gotta you gotta give Tomlin coach of the year just because it's very rare that they even get one win with mm -hmm. a backup QB and your third string QB is getting you dubs. Yeah, and you gotta look at it every every facet of the game worked for them in this one special teams defense oh they got one offensive touchdown then they got a kick return for a touchdown and three interceptions five sacks it's like this was this was a good all around game for them and this guy duck hodges he ain't making no mistakes this is true definitely true but in regards to Arizona though they got to give Murray a break you only have 71 yards running you only carried the ball 22 times you have a young quarterback, he's trying to get acclimated to the league. Give him a break. Allow him to just relax out there. Understand that you guys are going to look out for him. He's not looking out for you guys. You they, need I mean? a, they need to invest in an offensive line because every time he draws back, it's like if he wasn't so athletic, he'd, be, he'd probably get sacked 100 times this year. But he make, keeps a lot of plays alive with his legs. Mm -hmm. But he's so small, too. It's like, nah, you can't have this guy keep on getting these hits. It's not good. We see, we see what happened with Derek Carr, David Carr, Derek Carr, whichever car it was in Houston back in way back That's in way David. First. That's David, right? Yeah, David. Yeah, he, he was he was getting sacked every year, and his career got shortened because of that. So, I mean, this was the number one overall pick. You got to protect him. But, Definitely. But Pittsburgh, kudos to them. They're you know they're they're playing solid football in in December, and you know they're going. 
they got they in that wild card. I don't know if they get, they got a chance at the division, but they'll be they went out. They'll still have a chance. I mean, Tennessee right now got a chance too. They're eight and five, won their four, fourth straight game against Oakland, and Ryan Tannehill threw for like 391 yards, and Derrick Henry, Henry ran for over 100. So Tennessee is playing solid right now too. So they they still got a chance at the wild wild card. All right, the Browns. Their playoff chances are slipping. Uh, they did beat the Bengals, but everybody beats the Bengals. The Bengals uh, ha had called the season already. But um, this guy, what's his name? Baker Mayfield. Bro, what are you doing? There's some controversy. He, he, he decides to call out the medical staff. What? The medical staff of all, the, of all the staff to call out. The ones that take care of you. Like, bro, you talk too much. Yeah, 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 he does. Like, you can't really bite the hand that feeds you or bite the hand that bandages you up. Like, <laughs> he just... It's just unprofessional. Yeah, he... he I, the way I said it before the show, I felt like he's one of those people that's allowed to talk to anybody at home in the old type of way, but when he comes outside of his house, he think it applies, yeah. and it doesn't. It really doesn't. Like, <laughs> bro, you, sometimes you just got to know that you talk too much, and you just need to just answer the questions about the game, the, all that other stuff. Let let them let the f other folks handle it. Let the people who handle that handle that. And then there's also reports that... Odell Beckham Jr. isn't happy there, and that he's probably he probably wants it. He's gonna not gonna be there next year. That was a report. Jay Glazer, he's the one that broke the story of him getting traded to to Cleveland. He broke this story saying that Beckham has been saying that he wants out of Cleveland after the season's over. So once again, the Odell saga. But we all knew this. Him coming from New York, he's a mm -hmm. big market guy. He's not a small market player. Mm -hmm. Look how he acts. He needs that attention. So he needs to go to a. I don't know where they're going to ship him, but he needs to go to a big city. Probably L.A. they probably going to ship him there. But, shoot, if I was him, I'd be, if I was the GM, I'd be petty. I'd ship him to Buffalo. I thought you were going to ship him to Miami. Oh, that, I mean. That's the petty to petty. But it is Miami, so he can. That's what I was saying. Yeah, there's a big city. And his time. <laughs> this time. Get on more boats. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, so, that's that. Oh, lastly, the uh, last NFL little nugget. So, the Pats. You heard, you heard about this the video taping, and now we got another, another, another nonsense that you got to deal with. And it was the scout. They said they had permission from the Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns to do it, mm -hmm. but they didn't inform the NFL or the Bengals that they were going to tape it. They're saying that they were taping the Bengals sidelines, and now we got a whole other spy gate. But now it's like the person that reported it, the way they phrased it, it was like they they. Bruh, you, you, first the person she said she didn't get the full story, but the, she just tweeted that out that all oh, the Patriots were recording the Bengals sidelines. It's like now here we are, and now it's now it's the whole cheetah thing again. It's like, yeah, I'm a, you know I'm Todd's son, so I'm a, he always said if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> so that being said, I could care less. My thing is, is the NFL the only sport that? You can't know people's signals. I play basketball. They know all our plays when we call them. So, and they're cheating on the cuts. They're doing all this. Like, I don't understand what the issue is. Like, my thing is, if they were going to cheat, the Bengals, really? Really? If they was going to cheat, you, you would think they'd do it with Lamar Jackson a couple weeks ago, right? Or Patrick Mahomes. But the Bengals, they could go out and tell the Bengals every single play that they're about to run, and it still wouldn't matter because it'd work. But. But my whole hand signals and all this, like, Stupid. there are other sports that you know what they're going to run. Yeah. So I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Who cares what hand signals they use? Right. Right. <laughs> um, let's, go, let's go to Craig in the fantasy right. no huddle, talk about some fantasy football. I know fantasy football playoffs are starting. I finished 4-9 in my league. Yeah. Um, What's up, everybody, and welcome to... No Huddle, here on After The Whistle. It's your boy Craig. You may recognize me from my shows, brought to you by Jim Bag Entertainment, The Flex, The End Zone, and Tell The Tape. Uh, you know, it's a show about sports by guys that love sports. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, but this week, I'm here to give you my DraftKings Picks of the Week. Uh, starting off with the quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, going up against Atlanta. Uh, Jimmy G has been playing amazing football, and for 6,100, yo, that is the biggest 
biggest steal ever. I think he, you know, he went off last week, put up big, big numbers. I expect him to, to do nothing but repeat against Atlanta. Uh, it's going to be an exciting game, and I think they're going to kill it. Uh, in the running back position, uh, I spent a little bit of money on this guy, Leonard Fournette, going up against Oakland. Uh, I think they're going to get close to the end zone, and I think he's going to be the guy who runs it in. I'm really liking this matchup a lot, and I love Leonard Fournette in this particular game. Uh, then I kind of, you know, I, I kind of threw a little gamble out there. Uh, even though he scored two touchdowns last week, you never know what's going to happen. But for the running back position, I went with Raheem Mostert, uh, 5200 uh, That's a cheap price, but it's definitely a high price to pay for a guy you don't know if he's even going to get his touches. Tevin Coleman did come back last week, uh, but Mostert was, was the guy getting it done on the ground. By the way, Leonard Fournette, 7600 uh, in the wide receiver position, uh, I think I went for gambles in all three of these guys, but I think these are going to be the guys who put up the digits this week. Jarvis Landry going up against Arizona's almost non-existent defense this season, uh, 6,700. Uh, Robert Woods, who's been getting better and better with each passing week, has had some big numbers, putting up a lot this week. Uh, going up against Dallas, who has been absolute doo-doo all season. Shout out to E-Dub. Uh, yeah, Dallas Cowboys have been playing terrible. Uh, week by week, they're losing their opportunity to even be in the playoffs. Uh, Robert Woods is my guy. Uh, next, we have A.J. Brown. I think he might have been the top receiver receiver last week just putting up big numbers playing hard and uh, becoming Ryan Tannehill's favorite weapon and I think that repeats they're going up against Houston uh, someone on the tough side but I think they get it done and for six thousand uh, that that's easy that's easy money right there uh, in the tight end position you know I threw a lot of money out right in the beginning so now I got to step it back a little bit and uh, and get one of those guys for cheap money money who can perform for me and going up against Kansas City the tight end Noah Font I love it a lot I think he's gonna have big I think he's gonna have a big performance 21 points last week I just need him to repeat that again this week and it's money in my pocket uh, and then finally once no, excuse me, not finally in the flex position once again I put up so much dollars that I had to uh, I had to you know tighten up the budget uh, so I went with my guy Danny Amendola. Uh, I love Danny Amendola. I was always sad that the Patriots let him go. Uh, and he has a matchup going up against Tampa Bay, and Kenny Galladay is going to get that top coverage. Marvin Jones is out, so they got to lean on my boy Kenny. I'm on my boy Danny, and I think I think it's going to be one of his biggest games of the season. And I think he scores a touchdown. And then finally, for the defense, you know I got to go with the Patriots here. They're going up against Cincinnati. Cincinnati don't have Auden Tate. They don't got AJ Green. Who are they throwing the ball to? You get you you got Tyler Tyler you know you got Tyler Boyd but guess what I'm gonna put Stephon Gilmore on him all day you ain't gonna throw, you're gonna get to throw the ball you got to try to run it I don't know if it's gonna work out I think Patriots shut down maybe even shut out the Cincinnati Bengals it's gonna be a tough one for them so those are my picks Jimmy Garoppolo Leonard Fournette Raheem Mostert uh, Jarvis Landry Robert Woods A J Brown Noah Font Danny Amendola, Patriots D, money in the bank, let's go. And until next week, have a good night. <laughs> you do? <laughs> right, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So before we go to Athletes Corner, we are going to do some NCAA, some quick little highlights that we put together. Uh, first, it's gonna, we're going to go to the Northeastern Diverse Davidson recap, the post game, and then we're going to go to BC Eagles post game from last night's game. So here they are. I'm here with Jordan Rowland, and tonight was a tough loss. Walk me through the last quarter. I mean, it was really tight. You guys were thought you were going to be in the lead and went back and forth. Talk to me. Yeah, I think I think we made a couple good runs. Um, we cut it to I think I think four down the stretch. Uh, we put on the press. I think they looked um, a little shaky the first the, the first possession. Kind of gave us gave us some confidence. And um, I mean, I just think they hats off to Davidson. They made they, they made more plays down the stretch and were able to mm -hmm. were able to hold us off. Yeah, they, they, they played really well. Um, I think there was definitely opportunities where we could have taken the lead and 
Um, we just didn't capitalize, so we just got to keep getting better, and hopefully we can and can do it in the next couple games. What do you think you need to improve on this season? Um, as a team, or both? Um, I mean, I think two, two, two big bucket items for us has been um, rebounding, and um, I think and, and turning the ball over. I, I'm not sure how we did with that today, but um, I think if we continue to improve in those areas, we, we should be a lot better down down the road. What have you What have you said to your players so far in this season to keep them motivated? Well, you know, you, we we have a competitive bunch, and they want to be good. They they want to be coached, um, and they want to win. So. You know, I, I, but I think it's a, it's a long, hard season, right? There's a lot of things you have to do that are difficult. You got to get up. You got to work at it. You got to get in the weight room. You got to uh, come to practice every day. Your body's a little achy as the season wears on. You get some nicks and bruises, and it gets a little tougher to do. So everybody needs a little bit of motivation. Motivation, but this group is really there's a lot of self motivation because they have a lot of pride in themselves. They got a lot of pride in the program, and they want to be good. Mm -hmm. From watching this game, what do you think you need to focus on next practice? Well, I mean, I think we just got to keep getting better in the fundamentals. Uh, we've been a pretty good shooting uh, team. We didn't shoot the ball as well as we have um, all season, but that comes and goes. I know we, we put in the time on that. We can become a better rebounding team, and that's a, as a group effort, and we got to take a little better care of the basketball. I got to rebound. That's, that's one of the biggest things that we're kind of lacking right now that I need to bring and just keep it up on defense and, and just try to help everybody. I feel like... Well, we don't play for another 10 days, I think. So we'll probably just be um, just just going through our offense. We don't really, it won't really be specific to like who we play next yet. Okay. So I don't think there'll be a heavy focus. I think we'll just just try to get back in the swing of things. Uh, just keep our keep keep our bodies right and just just make sure our offense is moving how it should be. You know, they're a very good team. Uh, Dave Davidson is uh, you know they have a Hall of Fame coach and. They're NCAA tested, and they have some veteran guards, so uh, they played their A game, and you know we came up a little bit short. All right, North, Northeastern, they don't play. They play Eastern Michigan next week, so that was a tough game. But Davidson got a boy that game. Ooh, that boy was lighting it up. Yeah, he was Number telling three. me about it. All right, let's go to BC. They, put, they had a victory against University of Albany last night. Elza, the first half of them wasn't good, but the second half, they actually turned it on. So, BC post game. Cameron, Adam, can you guys talk about that second half? First half seems like early on you guys were knocking shots down, you guys were flowing on offense, and it seemed like in the second half nothing was going, the shots weren't falling and everything. I mean, unfortunately, that's how it is sometimes. Um, you can you know, you know, can look at it two ways and say, was it us, was it them? It could be a bit of both. Uh, I was a little frustrated in myself. You know, I'm a shooter, and they weren't really falling after the start of the game, so that's always frustrating, but... Yeah. Yeah, I have to say that the second half they came out and they started executing better. We turned the ball over to start off the second half quite a few times in a row. And they, like coach, they capitalized on our turnovers and they got into, a, got into a run and they got into a rhythm and we didn't. And then it kind of just extended and we went up against consecutive stops in a row and look after the ball, so it kind of just got away. Coach. Can you can you talk about how your how your defense created offense for your team because it seemed like the defensive yeah. intensity picked up in the second half. I think a lot. yeah, I think it was. We created more turnovers, um, came a little more aggressive at the point of the point of the ball. So I thought we really guarded the ball really well tonight, um, but we were very aggressive in our switches. Uh, we were very aggressive in, in guarding some of the different actions that they that they ran, and you know that's how we have to be. We have to be a team that um, can score off our defense in transition. That's when we're really good. Um, we have to be a team that makes unselfish plays, and we have to take care of the basketball. So, you know, the difference tonight was we only had six turnovers. We forced 20. So in the games that we were poor, we would still force a lot of turnovers. I think we're 40-something in the country, but we were turning it over. So, like, if we're turning them over 18 times and we're turning it over 15, it's not a big discrepancy, and I think that's the difference. We have to value the ball. In particular, Derek and Jay in the last two games, they, I think they've really played smarter. Um, you know, take away the two charges Derek had. Um, both, well, the second was on a really good play. He's got kind of a jump stop. We're playing smarter. And I think if you play smarter um, and you get shots at the rim, you have a chance to win. 
Chariots, how are you guys going to be able to keep this going? Big one Saturday, another one today, and you Sunday. guys. Sunday. <laughs> and We're going to win Saturday. Saturday. And then you guys come back. Oh, you guys come back. Play Saturday. You guys come back against Central Connecticut Sunday. How are you guys going to keep this going, this momentum going that you guys got right now? We just got to keep doing the same thing we're doing right now. I feel like we really bought in. We're playing good team basketball right now. It's, it's, you know, we At first, we were really trying to do a lot of stuff one on one, and now we're really getting into the team ball, you know, figuring out ways, you know, to to shots for other people, you know. And so I think that, you know, that we just got to keep doing that and it's going to have more success. Now we are gonna go to Athletes Corner. This is kind of a combined Athletes Corner, two two for one. So we got the Lynn English Lady Bulldogs and the Lynn English Bulldogs, boys and girls basketball team. So check it out, and then we gonna come back and wrap the show up. Welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner, and we are just a couple days away from basketball season, and we got the Lady Bulldogs here. They ain't bring me a shirt though, so <laughs> it's kind of, they, got, they got new shirts and I ain't get one. That's another story for another day, Mac. All right, ladies, what's going on? Not much. Getting ready for the season. Yeah, the year, year number. What's this? Year number three or four under Coach Mac? Year four. 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 Year number four under Coach Mac. Seniors, your senior. Seniors. The, the yeah. girls. What do, you, what do you guys see? Did it? Is it hit you guys? This is actually your last year. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna hit when we hit our first game. That's when it's really gonna I think get it's real. It's already hidden. <laughs> Yeah, how how fast does the time really go by? Because it feels like yesterday that y'all were just coming off the bench as freshmen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now this is, you know, you guys had the progress last season making the state tournament for the first time. Yeah. Had that run. So you know, what's, what's the mindset going into the season? Um, I don't know. I feel like we're just... We're just going in game by game. I think this year we have like a legitimate team. Our bench is going to be helping us as well, mm -hmm. which isn't something that we had in the past. Are you guys using that momentum from last year as well? That end of the season that you guys used to get into the tournament, you guys see that and you guys kind of using that just to help you guys with this season. It, just, it shows you guys what you guys can do when you guys actually, you guys are playing for something. Yeah, <laughs> I think we use that as a lot of motivation. Now, now what's, uh, what's the practice been like because it's been a it's actually been a short week a short mm. short time slot for practice yeah. with because usually you guys get like two a, a few weeks together but this yeah. is this it's like this year this gets shorter time. uh we've been focusing mostly on defense i think we're going to be a really good defensive team offensively we'll be there we're good on offense too but I think Defense we're changing is up our, our main yeah. focus right now. Yeah, stopping teams. All right. So what's the play? What's the what's the playing style? You guys gonna be uh, on offense? You guys gonna go up tempo, slow it down, or what? What's the strengths of this team's offense? We're hoping with our defense, we're gonna get stops by sailing and then just advance the ball so quickly. We're going up pace. Mm -hmm. So now you guys guys returned a lot of people. Returned a good amount of people. Didn't lose that many. How many seniors guys had like one last year? Yeah, two, we're returning yeah. the whole team. Yeah, you guys returning the whole team. So how do you, how did, how's the how's this you that been in uh, in the practices and, and that since you guys got together? Um, I think we have really good chemistry. I mean, like I I know my players from last year, so now I know them like even more this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chemistry is getting better and better every year. Sorry. Hey, what, what were you guys, what were some things that you you two were working on during the offseason? You, know, you had soccer. Mm -hmm. So you, that was kind of a quick transition for you. You went soccer, and then this, and then yeah. softball, and then <laughs> softball. So it's like, yeah. what, what was the time to work on your game? Uh, I would, after soccer practice, if they're still in the gym, I'd go over there, mm -hmm. get some shots up, or like I'd work out with um, my uncle Antonio, or yeah. For you, what are some things that what are some things that you're adding to your game this this uh this season um, that we're gonna see? I 
think I'll be more of a scoring threat this year. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's that's I've been in the gym this whole off season, so hopefully that paid off. All right, so game one, Saugus Thursday at Saugus. They were one of the top teams in the conference last year. Did they, did they win it like last year or a couple of years ago? Or they were in the, they were in the mix somehow? But t talk to me about this team. Like, how how are you guys preparing for them? Um, we haven't really set like preparing for Saugus yet, but after watching them in the Jamboree, like we know what we should expect. Like they're a good team. Every team that we're gonna be playing is a good team, but like Coach Mack told us, the only team that could beat us on our roster is ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And there's some there's some new faces on the team that was on that were on JV. Now they're gonna be getting more time yeah. on varsity. Can you talk about those those younger players that are, that are gonna get some key minutes for you guys? Um, I think um, Nia Sands is going to help us quite a bit. Um, she's another big. And, yeah, I think she's really going to help. Mm -hmm. I think we definitely have some upcoming freshmen as well that will be good assets. Um, some returning varsity players like Kelsey McNeil, Rosie. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's going to come up. I feel like everyone approved this summer. Yeah. And then we also have Mackenzie, who's a new asset to Atlanta English. Okay, okay. And and last, talk talk to me about the jamboree. How was that? What was that experience? Your last jamboree. <laughs> did you guys have butterflies, or was it just like let's just go out there and play? I think it's just go out there and yeah, play. Yeah, I think that was just the vibe. It was good energy. I think. Mm -hmm. I think we showed Lynn what to expect this year. Like, yeah. we might be it was just like, a little, we are that team to beat. Just a little sneak peek. <laughs> a little sneak peek. All right. And now, so tell them game time from Thursday. Tell the audience. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. in Saugus. 7 p.m. Yeah. in Saugus, season opener. Go check them out. They might have some free shirts for y'all. <laughs> No promises. No promises, right, right. but yeah, 7 p.m. season tip off college, high school, high school, high school basketball. Next year they'll be playing college basketball. This year, right now it's high school basketball. They're seniors. Their last year at Lynn English, so make sure everybody goes out and check them out, support them, support all the teams too, because kickoff tip off is this week for everybody. So make sure you go check them out. But thank you, ladies, for coming. No thank problem. You. All right, I want my shirt too. <laughs> We here at Lynn English. We got Jack. We got Coach Antonio. It starts Thursday. Title defense. Tell me how you guys feeling. I feel ready. We've been putting a lot of work these past few days, so we're just ready to go out and play and put it all together. Oh, man, I think it's been. In the last couple of days, like exactly what saying, uh, just trying to get them mentally prepared for the challenge that's ahead of us. Uh, and maybe open up next week, so just, just trying to get us, get us going in the right direction. You guys, you guys played a lot of tournaments, a lot of leagues in the summers against some tough teams, against some teams that you know you might see down the line. You're gonna see during the season. Just how, what was the thought process of you just getting, you know, getting them those, those type of experiences, playing against some of those guys, playing against some teams that you've never seen, but, you know. Doing he gets injured again. Um, you know, I just wanted to play whoever. Um, you know I, mean? I think uh, to get these, get ready for the state tournament, you gotta put us in different. You gotta put the team in different situations. Um, you know, travel, you know, playing you know, so a lot of tough teams on the road. Um, you know, playing some tough teams at home. So we're trying to build that, that momentum. So when February comes, you know, we're, we're ready. And I think last year we we put ourselves in a situation where we you know, were prepared for the big games, and I think playing those bigger games this year. Uh, which is even at a better advantage than we were last year. Jack, for you, what was, uh, what was the summer like just after the season ended? What was, because I saw a lot of you guys, you know, you guys were in the gym a lot, you guys were also working out on your own. Just what was, what was your guys' mindset? Were you guys getting ready for being the team that everybody wants to get their best shot at? Uh, <clears throat> uh, when the season ended, we took like a week off, and then right from there, we just started getting in the gym every day because we just, of course, defending champs, and now we just got to pick a target on our backs, so and we just want to be ready for all the teams coming to us. You guys lost, lost Calvin, you lost Alonzo. Those are two key guys that you got that were part of the rotation for you guys last year. So, tell me some of the guys that are going to step in for the work. Uh, everybody's going to step in, but like people that are going to fill in the shoes for Alonzo and Calvin. We got a demo that he came back, and a new player, JB. You're going to see him a lot this season, but yeah, we're just going to fill in the spots, continue to work hard and step up in 
you know, for the roles. Coach, yeah, has, it, has it been a little, what was the adjustment hit the adjustment for you to, with the coaching? Just, they got the target on their backs now, so what was, like, going into the season, your coaching mindset uh, on how to get them ready for that, get everybody's going to give them their best shot? Um, you know, it starts in practice. Uh, and, uh, you know, I tell them that all the time. Um, you know, I think the more they, they compete with one another, uh, things, will, things will be a lot tougher. Um, you know, I think some of the games we'll play, our practice might be a little better, it might be a little tougher, but, you know, we got guys, like you said, that can compete. Uh, we got the guys coming back, Jack, John L. Mason, and those guys. We got uh, Dimini back, we got GB here, you got Lou back, you got Aaron, you got Kanye, you got Gabe, you got Jefferson, you, you know, you go down the line, you know, we got a group of guys that are all very close, Joaquin, guys who all want to play, all want to compete, and I think we're probably one of the deepest teams around. Um, and, you know, we're trying to get everybody involved. That's going to be the tough one. Uh, now, kick Saugus. You guys got Saugus Thursday. Not much from yet, but what's so far, you know, what's, what's going to be a set against that team? What is, what is the game plan? Not the game plan, but just what's, uh, what's some things you guys got to key in there? You know what? Well, we, 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 we try not to look at the name on the jersey. Um, I think for us, it's just the excitement of playing. Um, you know, we're going to go on for our style of play. We're going to press him. We're going to be in the face. We're going to run. We're going to run and score. You know, we're going to play how we play. Uh, we're not going to back like settle for just to let just to ease up on anybody. Uh, we're going to play how we play. It's going to be a rough style of basketball. You know, that's how we play. Um, and I think a lot of the teams in the area know it. Um, it's a matter of stopping it. For you, Jack, how anxious are you just to get back on the court? Yeah, we've been waiting since like March. Yeah, he said we won the championship. We've been waiting ever since to play. So, just like he said, we don't really look at who we're playing. We just carry one rule, and that's always like play hard, play hard. So, if you everything else will take care of yourself. All right, all right. Last question before we get out of here. His his state championship team against Tech when he was at Tech. You got a state championship team. Who's winning that? Who's winning that? You already know. We're winning that. No question. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, they weren't ready for that. We, we had too much. He's not doing nothing. We had too much. <laughs> we, had, we had too much on Thursday. Thursday here, 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock? Yeah, yeah. 7 o'clock, August. There's state title defense starts here, and I'll be here. Everybody will be here. So check them out. Thank you, fellas. So, right. Matt, want my shirt? <laughs> we out of here. Athletes Corner. are back. Season season's tomorrow. Season open is tomorrow. And Lynn Classical plays Friday and I don't I don't know the schedule. Um quick notes before we get up out of here. So the Westland Mighty Mice, they're the national champions. They went down to Florida and got that trophy. Mm -hmm. So kudos to those ladies. Hopefully we get them back here. Ronald Akeem Ellis, he just won he won a match Saturday. I forgot who his opponent was, but he won his match. All so right. kudos. Kudos. Sin City man. out here getting yeah, uh, getting man. W's. Anthony Joshua won. We got his belts back. Now we're waiting for the fight with this guy, whatever his name is. Um, Wilder. We're waiting for that fight 2020, so we'll, we'll see what happens in that. And then also, this guy just had a birthday too, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, yeah, turned 34. Turned 34. We stood. We, were, we all behaved <laughs> ourselves because I was in bed and he was with his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do nothing crazy. But this weekend, no. Oh, snap. Oh. It's going down. <laughs> Shoot. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. We out of here. Um, oh, yeah. Next week is the last show of the year. Next Wednesday. It's, the, it's our last show of the year. So if you want to come in the studio, you want to drop in and watch us, or you want to come in, you can acknowledge you. But, yeah. So peace out, people. <laughs> <laughs>